Have you guys ever heard of elephant toothpaste before? What? Let's try this. Ready? Everybody count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey everybody, Mr. Hames here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make elephant toothpaste. Now when you make your own, it's not, not going to look quite like that, uh, so parents don't worry, we're not going to make a mess of your living room. The one we're having you try today is safe to do inside. We'll have uh, a little instruction video at the end of this video that will show you how to do this on a safe, small scale at home. But before that, I want to talk about what is creating that really cool foam explosion that you saw at the beginning of the video. Basically, it has to do with the chemical that I have in this beaker right here. It's just a clear liquid. In fact, if I didn't know any different just by looking at it, it looks like water or H2O. But this is different than water. It's not H2O. It's H2O2 hydrogen peroxide something you might have heard before you've used hydrogen peroxide if you've ever gotten a cut maybe uh, your parents pour some clear liquid that you find in the medicine cabinet to clean out that cut and kill any bacteria that might be inside it the reason we do that is we're trying to keep it from getting infected you also know that it uh, kind of foams up when it makes contact with the uh, wound that's because hydrogen peroxide reacts with what's in your blood and releases oxygen this hydrogen peroxide is a 30% solution. The hydrogen peroxide that you guys use, you can get off the shelf at Walgreens, is typically only 3%, maybe 6%. So a much higher con concentration. Now, the cool thing about hydrogen peroxide is it's actually reacting all of the time. That's because the bonds in hydrogen peroxide are so weak that it's constantly breaking down. If I just let this sit here long enough, just eventually become water because it's releasing all those extra oxygen atoms to form oxygen gas that goes into the air. It happens slowly over time. But if I add something like a catalyst, like this potassium iodide, watch what happens. So all my catalyst is doing is it's causing that hydrogen peroxide to react a lot more quickly, releasing oxygen a lot more quickly. So all those bubbles actually have oxygen gas in them. Now this looks a little different than the elephant toothpaste display that you saw me do at the beginning of this video. And that's because we're missing one key ingredient that doesn't actually react with anything. It only enhances what we're seeing. What is that ingredient? Whoops, dish soap. By adding dish soap to the mixture, it changes the reaction quite a bit. Now what's happening is all of that soap, see if there's any more in here, all of that soap, just like you would when you're uh, taking a bath or doing dishes in the sink, the reason you see bubbles is not because soap produces the bubbles, it captures the air that's being released in the water when you're swishing it around. Well, remember we had potassium iodide in there, which speeds up the reaction of the hydrogen peroxide that I just added to the graduated cylinder. It releases a lot of oxygen bubbles. What captures those bubbles? The soap, so it foams up. Now, the reason it didn't shoot out of the top, to the top of the test tube is I really didn't want it to. There's kind of an overhang above me and that would have been bad. Mrs. Haynes would have been a little bit mad at me. This is an Erlenmeyer flask, something with kind of a, a gradual incline in the edge and a smaller opening. The base is wider than the mouth, so it has some time to expand in here and build up some, uh, I guess, velocity before it exits out the top of the tube. It's going to be kind of like putting your finger over the hose. It increases the velocity of that coming out. That's why it shoots so high in the air. 
Everything that I just showed you today right here at my kid's little picnic table require chemicals that uh, are uh, a lot more potent than what you would be able to get at the store. We don't want kids working with these, but if you want to make elephant toothpaste, there are very simple ingredients. We are going to show you how you can do this from home. And for that, we're going to have Ella Peterson, Mrs. Peterson's daughter, who did this for a science project, show you exactly how this guy, this works. Remember, if you do this, please send us the pictures or post pictures with the hashtag TogetherWeSpartan so we can see how it's going. As this is elephant toothpaste, I'm going to leave you with uh, some instructions on how to do your own. Have a great day, everybody. be making elephant toothpaste. You're going to need one plastic or glass cup, tall container, one half of a cup of hydrogen peroxide, one tablespoon or one packet of dry yeast, three tablespoons of warm water, liquid dish soap, a small cup, and food color. I'm going to be putting the yeast into a cup. So, oh gosh, it's still in there. I have my warm water over here and my one tablespoon. I'm going to put three of those in there. Three. I'm just going to That's good enough. Okay. And then Now swirl it. Yeah, I saw that was a little bit more than a couple <laughs> yeah, drops. Just a little bit. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Our container is a vase <laughs> that's attached to our stand, so. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and add the mixture of yeast and water. All of it? Yep. Pour it on and. Then... Lumps. Elephant toothpaste at home. Now, Ella, is this okay to play in? Yes. It is. It is very kid safe. And actually quite fun to play in the foam. Oh gosh. As you see Ella rolling up her sleeves to dive in. It's warm. Mm -hmm. It is an exothermic reaction. Right on, which means it gives off heat. That is elephant toothpaste at home. Bye-bye. <laughs>